All right, good morning, girls. Since I can't be with you here today, we're going to do your direct instruction for 3.7 on formulas here on a video. Okay, so you'll have the examples for the types of problems that you're going to be going over available for you on this video. If you need to go back, you can re-watch it as many times as you need. So, earlier in the chapter, we've looked at solving uh, equations for a variable, multi-step problems for a single variable, and then solving if the variable is on both sides. When you have to combine like terms in your variables on each side of the equation. Now we're going to look at, and we previewed this a little earlier last week, we're going to look at um, solving an explicit formula. And what this is, is this isn't going to be something like 3x plus 5 equals 2. This is going to be the types of formulas that scientists have already figured out in order to help them um, do some algebra and solve for things that are really difficult to measure. Um, sometimes it's just that you already have one measurement and you want to change your units. So like, let's say that you have a measurement in Celsius and you need to change it to Fahrenheit. Or you have a measurement in Fahrenheit and you need to change it to Celsius. Right? Celsius is a really good one to use for math and science. Fahrenheit is not. So if you have one measurement and you need the other, instead of re-measuring, you can just convert it. Same thing with things like inches and centimeters, um, feet, meters, yards, miles, kilometers. Um, some more difficult ones or, or some more kind of specific ones would have to do with, let's say, gases. So we know that for every gas, Right? That there's a balance, there's a, a ratio between the, the volume of the gas, the pressure of the gas, the temperature of the gas, and the number of atoms in that gas. So of those four things, you can imagine that one of them is a lot more difficult to measure than the other. Right? So if you want to know the temperature of a gas, you just stick a thermometer in it. If you want to know the volume of a gas, you just look at the container that you put it in. If you want to know the pressure of a gas, you can just stick a barometer in it. But Counting the number of atoms is really, really difficult. And scientists have figured out that there's a formula called the ideal gas law, where pressure times volume equals the number of atoms times the temperature times a set constant that they found. And so by using that formula, you can plug in your measurements and then solve algebraically in order to figure out what the number of atoms is. Because it's easier to do the math than it is to try to measure it. So we're going to do some examples with a couple different formulas here, how you would use your single variable algebra, plug in your known values, solve for the unknown. So the first one we're going to use is temperature conversion, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay. So the original formula that they're going to give you is C, or Celsius, equals 5 ninths, and then in parentheses, F minus 32. Okay. And now this can be used for any value. Okay, this has an infinite number of solutions, because whatever your temperature is in Celsius, there's a coordinating temperature in Fahrenheit. So if it's 100 degrees Celsius, you can do your math room, solve, and find out what it is in Fahrenheit. If it's a million degrees Celsius, you can plug it in, do your math, and you can find what it is in Fahrenheit. So, looking at this, let's say that we start with... Um, 150 degrees Celsius equals 5 ninths F minus 32. From here, right, we would need to do the same thing we would do to solve for a variable. Once we've plugged in our numbers, we have the exact same type of single variable algebra that we've been working with in the earlier sections. So now we multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of this. We get 270 equals F minus 32. Then we add 32 to both sides. And we get that F equals 302. So 302 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, if you want to go back or look at those step by step, pause the video, go back. If you needed to just change the formula, again, C equals 5 ninths F minus 32. You do the exact same thing. 
Okay, if you're trying to solve for f instead of c, instead of having the number in there, you just continue to carry your pieces over. So you do the 9 fifths, and now you get 9 fifths c equals f minus 32, and then you add the 32. Now we have f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. And if you were to go in and plug your 150, you'd get the exact same number. This is what we talked about with PEMDAS, doing your PEMDAS backwards when you're moving things around algebraically, sets them up to be done in the right direction later. Because we move the multiplication before we go into the parentheses. Now on the other end, we have it set up where we can do that first. So. Next example, uh, we'll be looking at ones like for geometry, area of a triangle, is one half times base times height. And so again, if they told you that the height is 12 and the base is 4, you would just go ahead and plug that in. Area equals 1 half times 4 times 12. And you'd be left with 24. Now, they might not give it to you for the one that is already solved. So they might give you something like the area is 12 and the base is 4. So then you would plug in 12 equals 1 half times 4 times 8. And half of 4 is 2, so 12 equals 2h. Then we divide by 2, and you get that the height is 6. So whether you're working computation across for something that's already solved in terms of, or you're doing your algebra to move around and find something in the middle of the problem, these formulas are set and fixed. And there's a lot of just plugging in the numbers. Right? So either you'd be rearranging them to solve for base or height, something like that, or you'd be plugging in your values to solve for, plugging in your knowns to solve for an unknown. Some other ones you might see are the density formula. Density equals mass divided by volume. And these are very simply rearranged. If density equals mass over volume, you can multiply both sides by volume and get volume times density equals mass. And if volume times density equals mass, I can divide both sides by density and get volume equals mass over density. And these are all equal to each other. If I said that density was 6, mass was 3, and volume was 2, whoops, density was 3, mass was 6, volume was 2, and I go in and start plugging these, I get 2 times 3 equals 6, and I get 2 equals 6 divided by 3. So it works any way that you move it around. The problems that you're going to be doing on page 174 and 175, are numbers 3 through 8, thirteen through 16, and 18 through 20. Not a lot of problems today. If you finish early, go back and review your 3, 3, and 3, 4 single variables um, in multi-step equations and single variables on both sides of the equation. And tomorrow morning, we will have a quiz. Enjoy.